In this video, we'll be going over some roof framing options, including adding exposed rafter tails to our roof planes. Before we start, in this plan, we have auto rebuild roofs set on, so any changes we make to the roof defaults are applied automatically. To turn this on, we can go to the Build menu, Roof, and click Build Roof, and check Auto Rebuild Roof at the top. Now, let's create a backclipped cross-section of our house so we can see our changes in more detail. Go to the 3D menu, create orthographic view, and choose backclipped cross-section. First, wherever we click and hold is where the cross-section camera will be placed, cutting through our plan. Wherever we drag towards is the direction the camera is facing, and where we release is where the next cut happens, taking a slice of our plan and displaying it in the elevation. Once the elevation comes up, let's generate some framing and then turn on the framing layers. Go to the Build menu, Framing, Build Framing, and check on Automatically Build Framing. Click OK, and if we're in the elevation view when it happens, the program should prompt us to toggle on the framing layers. Otherwise, we can go to the Active Layer Display Options, type in Framing in the search at the top, highlight all the layers by clicking and dragging across all the layers, and then click the display box near the bottom until it's checked. We can adjust our roof framing settings as desired in the roof defaults. Since we have auto rebuild framing on, these changes should be immediately apparent. Let's go to build, roof, and then build roof. In the structure panel, we can modify many different settings including member spacing, blocking style, roof finish and structural layer makeups, and roof structural size options. For example, if we click Edit next to the roof surface section, we can modify the topmost shingle or sheathing material, or add layers if we want to have purlins on our roof. Clicking Edit next to Structure will let us modify the depth and other settings of our structural layers. By default, the program uses the Room Ceiling Finish settings for the underside of roof planes, including in cases of a vaulted ceiling, but if we wanted to have our ceiling determined by the roof plane, we can specify that here. In our cross-section view, we can see that our rafter is currently at the specified size, but is then cut to fit into our overhang area. Still in our Build Roof menu, we can see that while our rafters are 9 and a quarter inches, the size of the part that overhangs is the size of the fascia. The subfascia is currently set to 5 and a half inches. If we change the eave and gable subfascia to 7 and a half inches and click OK, we can see our rafter tail resize to match. Back in Build Roof, which we can get to quickly by clicking on the button on our top toolbar, and then in Options, we have the settings for creating a boxed eave. We can check the box, and then either have it default to the overhang distance, meaning the boxed eave goes all the way to the exterior of the wall, or we can uncheck this and specify a boxed length. Lowering this value and clicking OK will give us a smaller boxed eave. We will start from the bottom of the subfascia, Go to the length specified, and go up to the subfascia depth. Going back and checking on defaults will give us the full length of the rafter throughout the eave. For this next step, let's hit undo several times until we're back where we were with the original 5.5 inch subfascia. To expose the tail, we can remove the soffit. In the Build Roof dialog, in Structure, we can uncheck Soffit, and after clicking OK, we'll see our rafter resized to the full size of the rafter depth. If we want a different color than the fur framing we started with, we'll have to go back to the Build menu, 
Structure, edit the structural layer, and replace the material here with what we want, like a paint color. We can also remove elements we may not want with our exposed rafters, like the gutter, by deleting the gutter profile, and the gable and eave fascia and subfascias. Click OK, and we'll see our results in the cross section. Let's customize it now with a rafter tail profile. Back in Build Roof, Let's go to Rafter Tails, click on Add New on the right side, expand the core catalogs, architectural, moldings, profiles, extrusions, and then we'll find the Rafter Tails folder. As we can see, all the Rafter Tail profiles have a missing line on the left. This line is unneeded as it's where the tail connects to the main rafter. Let's select one of the profiles and click OK. Click OK again to see our rafter. Back in Build Roof, we have options for height and width, which we currently can't change since it's set to stretch to fit rafter, and an extend value, which will extend the default position of the rafter tail by the amount specified. Negative values will pull the rafter tail further in, so if I put a negative one here, we'll see the rafter tail recede along the rafter slightly. Back in the dialog, if we uncheck stretch to fit and click OK, we can see now how it looks on the rafter. We can also see the blocking that's generated when we have exposed rafters, and we can see it better if we create a framing overview by going to the 3D menu, create perspective view, and Perspective Framing Overview. We can also create partially exposed rafter tails. To create full depth, partially exposed rafter ends, we'll want to go back to the Build Roof menu, and then Structure. First, let's uncheck Trim Framing to Soffits, check back on Soffits, check on the fascia, and then specify the gable subfascia depth, which will control the height of the soffit. Let's also go to Rafter Tails and delete our custom profile. Click OK, and we can see our results in the cross section. For now, though, let's click Undo to get back to the exposed rafter setup we just had. We can also draw our own custom rafter tails and apply them to our rafters. We'll want to do this in a flat view like a floor plan view, in a CAD detail, or in an elevation view. In our cross section, let's go to the CAD menu, Line, and click Draw Line. Let's draw a simple square end shape by clicking and dragging, making sure the two ends are in line using our snaps. We can then further modify it by using the Chamfer Lines tool, then clicking on Set Chamfer Distance, setting the distance we want, and clicking on the other side of the corner we're chamfering. This will give us a basic cut corner look to our profile. We can also use any of the other basic CAD editing tools, like Break or Make Arc, to further customize it. Once we're satisfied with our profile, click the Add to Library button on the bottom toolbar with the shape selected, and it'll be added to our user catalog with the name Molding. We can then rename it by right-clicking and choosing Rename, and we can then delete the original shape in our cross section, and then apply it by going back to Build Roof, Rafter Tails, Click Replace, find the profile in our user catalog, and click OK. This concludes our video on modifying eaves and making exposed rafter tails. 
We have more resources on framing in the built-in help in the program or on our website.